In today's episode of our photography review show, we're going to review 67 photos from 27 photographers. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of our photography review show. I hope you had a great week, I hope you're having an amazing Monday and I also hope that you're ready for another portion of photography reviews. Now, if you've never been with us before, for those who don't know me, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a professional photographer based in West Sussex, England. Now, for the past six or seven months, I've been reviewing photos from our photographic community and it's been very, very popular. We receive hundreds of photos and hundreds from hundreds of photographers. So for this reason, what we had to do, we had to limit the entries to one or two pictures per photographer per week. And we also each week take the show and divide it between two or three different parts based on the photography style. We usually look at the landscape photographers, mixed team photographers, and the rest of the photography styles in the last part of the show. Now, before we're going to jump into the actual reviewing, I have two things to share with you. Number one, make sure you join us in our new Facebook group. It's called Clever Photographer Academy. So lots of fun. We talk all things photography there. We review your photos throughout the week. We answer your photography questions and we do and uh, organize uh, regular photography competitions. So it's a lot of fun. Make sure you head to Facebook, search for Clever Photographer Academy and join us today. And the second thing I need to do, I need to introduce you to our photographer of the week from the past episode. And that's what we're going to do right now. And here we go with one of the most popular part of the show. It's time to look at the photographer of the week. Now, our photographer of the week uh, this week is Sandy Stoltzman, all the way from Springfield, Pennsylvania in United States. Now, she uh, recently returned from her trip to Costa Rica, where she was after shooting uh, wildlife photography. And we have to say that the images are absolutely incredible. We are here at her profile right now, which you can definitely check out. There is the link right here. Uh, she she also has a LinkedIn profile, which you can also find right here. And then you can see her website at murals.design. So uh, those are the kind of different ways of how you can see Sandy's work. And obviously one of the most accessible one is through her Instagram account. So looking at it just right here, uh, a series of images um, which are absolutely incredible. Out of all of them, my favorites are really the one with the dark background, like this snake here. I think it's absolutely beautiful. When you look at the image, when you see the level of details, the texture, uh, the composition, it's just beautiful. It's really well done. Again, here, another one with the frog, also so, so beautiful. Um, and there is more and more. Sandy herself uh, doesn't always see herself as a wildlife photographer. She says that she likes the challenge and she likes to try different things. However, I think you can see that definitely she has a talent for wildlife photography. Uh, the captures are incredible, beautiful beautiful and super well done. It's a mixture of great uh, photography technique, really good eye for composition, and then very careful but powerful editing. So Sandy, congratulations. Thank you very much for sharing the work, uh, your incredible work with us and well done. We can't wait to see more photos from you in the upcoming months and hopefully years. So that's done. Uh, we have met Sandy and same for all of you folks. If you want to join us, if you want to become our photographer of the week, all you need to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash review and that's where you can find the upcoming dates and links where you can upload your photos and maybe next week I'm going to be talking about you. So that's that out of the way. Now let's jump into the reviewing. And here we are with the third and final part of our photography review show, where we're going to be looking at the rest of the photography styles. We have a food photographer, portrait photographer, travel photographer, and also some wildlife photographers to look at. So let's jump straight into it. Starting with the food photography from Larissa. Uh, Larissa, always a pleasure to see your images. And we have uh, two pictures right here. So let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the uh, camera settings. Let's see, both of them captured with the same camera, same lens. So Canon 600D, 50 millimeters, f1.8. Now looking at this one, you were on ISO 100, 50 millimeters and f3.5. On this one, 100 of a second. So looking at it like this, uh, when I zoom in, I'm not 100% oh, in this. The details are on the fork, that's for sure. Now there are details on this part of the pancake, 
but this part seems to be a little bit out of focus. So that's just one thing I'm kind of mentioning, noticing. I think the light is very, very nice, obviously creating a little bit of um, blush on this part, so some highlights here, but the rest is quite nice. Um, again, two portraits, um, two portrait captures, so obviously the crop is quite nice and close, but it creates quite nice scene. So uh, very appetizing. The food styling here I think works very well as well. Obviously using different elements with the composition and all works very, very nicely. Now on this one, we are on ISO 150 millimeters, f 2.8 1 80th of a second now f 2.8 creating like a really strong depth of field the only part in the focus is this um and it, it's uh, as a part of siri of the pictures definitely as, as a good choice obviously when you think about it out of the whole image it's only this square which is uh fully focused and also seems to be a little bit of the plate here so maybe yeah, they are at the same distance However, I think it looks very cool. I like the contrast between the colors of the brown and white. The spoon, again, kind of disappearing in the brightness, I think works very nicely. Now, uh, there is a little bit of like a visible, some kind of grain or, uh, or what, but uh, it still looks quite cool put together. Now, when it comes to composition, um, and, you know, kind of, kind of food styling. And between the two, I prefer this one. I think this one looks a little bit like it's actually falling on you, including the food. Uh, so it's kind of, I don't know if it's the distortion of the lens or how it was placed together. It's just uh, just kind of really feeling like it's falling towards you. There's also a few kind of artifacts visible here and here where I'm not 100% sure if you've done any post-processing to it or not, but it's just kind of poking out on me. And uh, finally, with the composition, I think there is a lot of uh, depth and softness on this there is a uh, almost kind of too much also it seems like maybe on this part uh there is a kind of like a fingerprint visible on it i'm not sure if i'm right or not but it's just something what looks very similar to it so uh not necessarily big things but because i think the level of your photography is very very good i'm trying to pick things which you could maybe improve for the future now when we look at this one and we talk about composition this one is a little bit cleaner and neater i think again very nicely done as, as i said already kind of uh direct uh kind of crop close crop but nicely done i think the uh level of focus is here nicely balanced obviously almost the whole plate with everything except the top all the way but i'm not 100 percent sure but that could be also just the character of the food so maybe it just looks like it's a little bit soft everything else works nicely together it's nicely cleaned around as well uh, some drops here but still uh, lovely lovely put together uh, the center the kind of shape of the plate i think it all works very nicely together now when it comes to post-processing um the food looks appealing all of them i don't like this minimal white uh, effect you do i think it looks very good just as much as i like the dark um, kind of high key low key editing you do i think it works very well and it really creates a very trendy look on the food so well done there uh you could kind of clean up few things in photoshop if you would want to just kind of make it you know when you really try to look for things you know you could kind of get rid of this speed here so it doesn't kind of distract the viewer um, however, it's still very well done, excellent food photography, uh, well handled and well put together. So Larissa, thank you very much for sharing the images with us. It's always a pleasure to see them. I always love to see your work. If you have more, sometime soon, send it over to us. We would love to see it and I'm sure um, our photographers would love to inspire from it. Moving on now to the portrait photography category. Now, uh, Geoff, uh, you sent us two pictures over the first one I already reviewed. I've seen it in past. So I thought we're going to stick with this young lady here. And that's what we're going to look at. So let's look at it. We have the camera settings here. Nikon D80, 18 to 55 millimeter lens with f3.5, f5.6. And then the camera settings. ISO 100, 32 millimeters, f10, 1, 125th of a second. So as a... As the setting goes, ISO 100 is, of course, definitely the way to go. F10 for portrait is unusually kind of higher, especially because there is not that much happening here. There's no, uh, you know, you don't need sharpness at the back because there is not much happening behind the lady. 
uh, and I don't know if it was dark behind before or if you added dark afterwards, but just something to kind of think of. And one 125th of a second is fine specifically for kind of standstill model. It's a good, uh, good capture. Now looking at it, obviously we're looking for a sharpness in the eye. That's always kind of key indication. It, it's touch, touch, and that could be again from transition from your RAW file into the JPEG. It seems touch, um, touch, uh, blurry, touch soft. I don't know where exactly the focus is on it, but you would be looking for it on the face to start with. Which brings us to composition. There is lots of this negative space, and specifically when the model is pointing and looking towards that side, you would want a little bit more space on that side, I think. I think there is lots of this negative. Uh, part which I think uh, yeah I, I would she seems to be just a little bit too shift towards there so something to kind of keep an eye on other than that obviously she's looking around nicely done the hair is nicely done the styling is quite nicely done as well so just something to kind of think of for the future now when it comes to post-processing obviously the makeup is nice the light is nice here uh, now there are obviously two different views you could kind of look at it either leave it very natural so then obviously don't touch the skin, although her face has a great makeup, so that looks like it's been retouched. And I think that's where the contrast comes. Obviously you have some kind of uh, skin uh, pieces and parts where in a combination with this almost perfect skin, I wonder if it would be worth to revisit it maybe with a really simple editing in Photoshop and just kind of touch few of these parts to make it more balance with the face. I think that's where the thing coming. I have no problem with either or. I really like natural portraits where there is no touchdown and then I like the ones where they are kind of heavily edited and I think you need to find a balance specifically when your face is uh, done very well with the makeup so then the rest of the body should be also touched uh, a little bit I think. Just something to think of for the future because otherwise I think the color tones and skin tones are well done here. The light again is very very well done. I think the black background actually works very well. It's done quite nicely. Obviously when you zoom in you see tiny bit of glow around but it's nothing massive and put together it works quite well. So Geoff, thank you very much. Few things to think about just for the future uh, and hopefully maybe to move on from there. So take care, stay safe and send us more pictures in the future. Moving on next photographer, we have a John Dalston. John, our photographer of the week from two weeks back, I believe. Um, I always wonder when I look at the pictures if it's your daughters or if it's just the people around you, because it's a very specific face and it's it's, it's a very pretty young lady. And I think, uh, you know, especially even the picture from last week, if we kind of jump into it quickly, it just really worked, you know. That's a very, very photogenic uh, person. Where are we, John? Uh, of course I won't be able to find it now so let's leave it but you know what I mean a little bit uh, just great face for portrait photography and then we have a cut so this week we it's portrait photography for pets and for um, for a human as well for people so let's have a look at it let's jump to it talking about this one Nikon D3300 105 lens um, and from setting ISO 100 spot on 105 f5 creating really nice kind of softness towards the back of it. So that's quite nicely. One 250th of a second, making everything nice and sharp. I think what works here really is the kind of tight crop. Um, then the shadows created by the hair, I think really nicely close the image. What I really like is the sharpness in the eye. I think that's really, really well done as well. And a lot of these kind of details. And I really like the transition, the gradient between the sharp hair to the back to the softness. The kind of almost side backlight works quite nicely too, creating a little bit of a glow. Now, this picture in overall, I think would work a little bit better as a part of a series, some multiple images, because I think it's really kind of full on close, but still very, very well done. Um, so this one technically is beautiful. What a black and white photography. And the main reason why I like it is the level of detail and also almost like the cut really positioning herself for portrait photography. The level of detail in the eyes, the level of detail on the hair, something what's really not as simple as many people think, but well executed here. So talking about the camera again, Nikon D850, 70 to 210 millimeters. And then from the camera setting, ISO 400, 210 millimeters, f5.6 and 1 200th of a second. So obviously the ISO 400 did give you a little bit of noise or grain. 
however you want to call it, which is not a big deal because for black and white, it always kind of translate like it's something what you either wanted to do or added in post-processing. So not a big deal. Other than that, uh, the face and the details and the depth of field here, which again with f5.6, that's quite a good spot because quite often I see these kind of portraits and the nose is blur. And then there is of course bit which is focused and the ears are blur. And there's a really fine balance how to do it. And with so close image, you want pretty much all of the in face being in focus because I think the uh, the low depth of field, you know, when you have a really small f-stop, is overdone thing, and I think this is just very well done. Which brings me to composition, very simple, straightforward uh, portrait capture, um, well framed with everything in it, the hair, uh, the face, obviously the slight turn, which really works well here, really nice light coming from the front on the side, uh, creating these really nice shadows here, very well done. Now on this one, when it comes to composition, one thing, I just wish she didn't have the chain. I think it's a little bit distracting. Um, uh, just, I don't know why, it's just sometimes you look at something and you think, oh, I just wish that was not there. Other than that, it's very nicely done. Let's just see if the face is in the center. And it is, it's maybe just the hair which makes it a little bit uh, puffed. But other than that, it's nicely done. I know for a fact this picture would look also great in black and white. Uh, simply because of the shadows and the brightness and the, uh, the texture and the kind of obviously the skin face she has. I think it, that would look great. Now, uh, let's just see. Even the eyes are on almost on the third. Just well done. Well done, John. Uh, Post-processing wise, yeah, um, I'm not crazy about the white balance, to be honest. I think it goes a little bit on a green side, but again, that's the white balance is very artistic decision. So, it's just completely up to you, you know, uh, just kind of keeping it that. I think uh, I would a little bit push the focus on the face, maybe just by a simple radial gradient, really kind of bringing it more like this, really kind of bringing the attention towards it. But then, then just leave it. Let's just see the black and white. Um, yeah, it would look great. Push it a little bit with the kind of contrast, the exposure, Maybe something like this, something like this, and then really work with the local adjustment would kind of really make it very nice, I think. Um, so, obviously, not that much, but we will adjust it again with something like this, and then another one where bah, 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 we could off blow again. This and then really play around with different parts. Um, like that. And then uh, again, creating kind of powerful uh, vignette on this one. And we get something completely different, but I think just as powerful. Nice. Talking about this one, John, absolutely nothing to add. Beautiful black and white image, beautifully edited super well done so thank you very much for sending your pictures over it was a pleasure to review them for you you stay safe and send us more in the future moving on the next photographer we have this gentleman here robert robert we have had two images from you one in black and white and one in uh in color. Sadly, there is no camera details and they are really, really small size. So that's always a little bit tricky because, you know, for kind of looking for sharpness and so on, you kind of want to zoom in. And obviously, when you zoom in to this degree, you see how you almost get just a square. So that's really shame. Similarly on this one, a little bit bigger, but still. So just from, I will just review for what I can see. Always also really happier when we try to stay away from adding frames watermarks and signatures just to keep it clean and for me to really focus on the image i think it's always a good idea however looking at it like this from technical part of the view from what i can see obviously very nice posture of the person very nice light uh very nice black and white with lots of contrast lovely depth of fields as well with the kind of main focus focusing on the person however leaving it the back soft but still visible creating nice elements also filling the negative space, I think it's a really, really good idea. And this around as well, adding a little bit of order into the composition. So technically, I think very, very well done here. Now this one, obviously, as a close-up, probably part of the series, I think works very well too. 
focusing really on the face light coming from this side creating this kind of darker area here is nice lots of textures lots of details all across including the hair yeah quite nicely done the light in the eye the focus in the eye uh yeah nicely done um moving on the composition talking about the artistic feel this is your traditional kind of close-up uh, i can't i don't want to say that you can't do anything wrong with it but so, you know, you kind of you tie the light is right, the setting on the camera is right, and you will get a good picture. Where with this one, I think there is lots happening, and then I, as I mentioned already earlier, uh, I think it's really well composed. This thing, you know, obviously the person looking away, almost looking like a sailor, and uh, then uh, obviously the leading lines here, creating a really nice frame, filling the space, creating balance composition. This is very well done, and I think the black and white here really makes sense with the contrast with the background, which is kind of bright. Uh, excellent excellent work and if we would talk about post-processing i could not add anything here you could do a little bit more uh, local adjustments maybe adding a little bit of brightness to him but other than that well done but on this one the light is the colors and light is a little bit flat here um just don't know if it's the transition which could be again just simply because of the transition between portrait uh, between the jpeg and the raw file uh, but out of the two they both very professional very well done i just prefer this one Robert, thank you very much for sharing them with us. It was a pleasure. Uh, please do stay safe. And if you have more images, send them over. We would love to see them. Which brings us to the travel photography. Miri, we have uh, two images from you. So let's have a look at it. We have this one right here with the cross and these two kids playing on the beach. Uh, so this one, now, um, Let's have a look if we have any camera details. We have Nikon D90, 18 to 200 millimeter, and this one was ISO 200, 24 millimeter F8, 1 250th of a second. So just looking at it like this, from this point of view, daylight straight directly going, go for as low ISO as possible. So 100 is always the goal. F8, now when you're shooting something like this, which is so isolated and so on its own, I like to go really low on the f-stop, so f4 or whatever, 3.5 or whatever the lens allow you to, because it creates really nice uh, depth, separation from the background, and and then once you do do to, those two, then let the camera tell you about the shutter speed, because it's a daylight situation, there will be no problem with kind of running into softness or anything like that. So that would be my settings for this. Other than that, uh, all sharp, all good, lots of texture in the sky, very well done. Moving on this one, this was Nikon Coolpix P600 and the settings here, ISO 100, f4.5, 1 800 of a second. Now 1 800 of a second will give you this freeze moment, which you see it right here. Obviously the waves are frozen, the people are sharp-ish, although this one, maybe it's kind of smaller file because it gets a little bit pixelated when I zoom in, but still, Obviously, they all in movement and so on. ISO 100 is also always a good choice because you will avoid any additional noise adding to it. Other than that, yeah, th th there are pieces on them which are a little bit um, softer. Um, I mean, uh, more probably on him than her. And also, I see a little bit of noise in these kind of areas, which I'm kind of wonder what it's from. It could be the camera itself, because usually with ISO 100, you shouldn't have this issue. So that's about it. Let's leave it. Let's go and talk about composition. Now, when uh, the cross is your main subject here, what I would make sure, I would make sure, first of all, it's centered. So you can just crop it a little bit differently. Um, so that would be my first thing. And then I would probably double check it in geometry to make sure I have it nice and straight. So that would be number one. Like this. So I have the cross in the center again, making sure. And take it from there. Other than that, that's it. That's your main subject. That's your main message. Obviously, beautiful piece of art, specifically if that means something to you with the background. Really, really nicely done. Well done. Excellent job. And now what you could do when we talk about post-processing here, you could actually select the sky and maybe desaturate it a little bit to create a little bit more contrast between the main subject and the sky. Now, in Lightroom, you can do that really easily by going into masking, click on select sky, which takes a moment. And once the sky gets selected, what you need to do, you just need to lower the saturation. So if you would do something like this, suddenly we're creating a really nice balance between the saturation of the cross and saturation of the background. Another thing, because it's quite sharp, the sky, I would bring down the clarity a little bit to make it a little bit more.
streaming. And there you have it. The final thing you can do here also is add the vignette again to bring even more focus on the actual subject. So that's where I would take it. And <laughs> how about these two? So uh, talking about two kids playing, I would probably want a little bit more space here for them to move into. So that can be created either by different framing or you can also use a little bit tighter crop. So go for something like 16 or 9 or even tighter and shift it around. So you kind of removing space behind there, which gives us more contrast into the space in front of them. So composition wise, that's what I would do. So then they really have a kind of space to play and it creates a really nice balance from the kind of tall girl to the boy. I hope it's a boy and to the balloon. So that's where I would take it. And that's where you could leave it. I think it's a lovely holiday capture. Uh, the brightness is there. Maybe keep an eye on the white balance just to make sure. You don't want it as warm, but maybe a little bit warmer. A little bit of white brands is also a good idea. And then I usually just my holidays photos end them with uh, a little bit of vignette here. And there you have it. So like this, Miri, thank you very much for sharing the pictures with us. This is just a few hints of what you could do and how you could do some stuff differently and stay safe and send us more pictures in the future if you can. Which brings us to wildlife photography. Each week we end up with the wildlife photographers and this week won't be different. So we have a two images from Ken here and uh, we have a, this bird very kind of detailed shot right here and this one right here can uh, look in at this one specifically and it looks like it's the size it seems really pixelated so it could be the quality or i'm not sure why but usually i don't have this issue there's also a little bit of light leak here i don't have the issue with your pictures like this so either maybe you just need to export it in a bigger quality for me to see it in different ways or just something to kind of keep an eye on so let's have a look at them. Uh, Nikon Coolpix P1000 on this one, ISO 200, 108 millimeters, F5, 1 250th second. Uh, so again, from the quality, it's a bit difficult, but I think the sharpness is quite nice. I love the contrast between the bird and the background uh, with very nice framing and quite nice light coming from the side. Where if we move to this one, this is the same camera, the setting is ISO 200. I wonder if it's the same bird. It's probably the same bird. Uh, ISO 200, 108, and F5, uh, 1 250th of a second. So F5 isn't creating as much separation from the background as I would hope, because it's really kind of distracting a little bit. There is lots of happening, but still a little bit of softness. Again, the bird is in a full focus, which I think is very well done. The light is nice and diffuse, although you can see that there was a little bit of harsh light here. But I think it's quite cool. So which, if we stay here and we talk about the composition, I think it needs a little bit of tighter crop, but more on the kind of cinematic, panoramatic, something like this, I think. So then the bird has a space in front of him to walk into. And that's about it, yeah. I mean, the message is clear. It's a bird walking around, lovely contrast, uh, lovely depth of field. Even though I wish there was a little bit more of it, well done. Now, talking about this one, I think the composition is very well. Uh, obviously, the bird pointing into the center of the image, something like this. Uh, beautiful color, beautiful contrast, put together can very, very well done. I just wish it was in a better quality. And uh, in the post-processing, just as always on this one, keep an eye on the white balance. I think a touch of uh, rose and touch of temperature will make it a little bit more natural. I think a little bit of a brightness would help as well. I think the picture is a little bit too dark, both of them to this week, to be honest. And uh, just a touch of contrast, maybe. There you have it. Ken, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your photos with us. Always a pleasure to see them. You take care, stay safe, and send us more pictures in the future. Which brings us to Lori. Lori, oh, we have oh, such a cute puppy here. Look at the feet. He'll be huge one day. I have no doubt about that. And then we have this, oh, which I will never be able to say what kind of animal it is. So let's call it an animal. Uh, talking about the dog here, uh, Canon Digital Rebel on this one, 18 to 55 millimeters lens. And from the setting ISO 400, 40 millimeters F5, 1 60th of a second. So obviously it's extremely cute dog. However, you get something I haven't seen for very long, and that's the red eye. You know, the old cameras, they used to do the red eyes, and you would kind of have it developed, and you would have it developed 100 pictures, and three two-thirds of them would have a red eye. So you get a little bit of red eye here. 
unless the dog actually had a red eye, which is completely possible. There used to be a tool here on removing it, but I guess they maybe took it off because uh, uh, it's just not really used anymore. I wonder, maybe in this thing here, no, no, how about this? No red eye, no red eye. So go on. Anyway, uh, talking about it like this, talking about the settings, obviously the ISO is a little bit higher. Uh, one sixtieth of a second also for animal isn't as sharp. Um, what probably strikes me the most is kind of lower size of the image, 276 kilobytes. I think Lori just really, as much as you can, if it's possible, try to send bigger images because it will really help us to see a little bit more details and more stuff around it. So probably one sh which strikes me is the high ISO, uh, which does bring the noise with it. But then when I zoom in to look for the noise, you kind of get really lots of pixelation from the size of the image. But the dog is extremely cute. The light is quite nice, kind of illuminating uh, the front. I wonder if it's your dog. You should write it in a comment. And uh, the texture behind him is actually quite pleasing as well, creating a nice uh, contrast. Now on this one, that's a lovely picture as well. Is it the same camera? Same camera, but this time different lens, 70 to 300, this one. And uh, ISO 400, 271 millimeters, f5.6, 1 250th of a second. So f5.6, f5 creating this lovely background, almost kind of turning into bokeh, which I think looks very, very cool. Uh, ISO 400, again, a little bit higher. And... Uh, a little bit bigger however you can see some of the noise obviously kind of going through which is a little bit of a shame because that noise also take over a little bit of a sharpness but it's a lovely picture um, with quite lovely light as well here lovely texture and lovely detail so since we're staying here let's talk about composition it's beautiful positioning lovely stone he's sitting on really lovely contrast with the color and the animal which i think works really well and i just wish this part would be a little bit more separated so it doesn't look like it's kind of cut off um, that would be if i would be really picky that would be my only thing to add to it the positioning in the third here i think works really well the smooth depth of field the kind of transition works very well here and it's just very well done this one is brilliant where this one uh when it comes to composition i, I really like how it's kind of balanced it's balanced composition uh, it's the post-processing where maybe it's, I think it's a little bit too warm. The dog is kind of pointing here. It's a lovely capture, uh, very sweet, very kind of cute and quite nicely done, you know. Uh, I wonder if you could kind of add more pictures, you know, like a close-up on his face and so on, what it would do. Uh, so sticking here with the, for the post-processing, obviously the vignette is there, which is really nice. Keep an eye on your color balance just because you seem to get lots of kind of warm. So maybe just a touch of cool. And maybe a little bit here, there, maybe a little bit of extra pink to make all this a little bit more natural. Other than that, yeah, you could do a little bit of local adjustments with a kind of dodge and burn, but I think like this is very, very cute anyway. I think this would look great in black and white as well, of course, pushing the contrast and getting something a little bit different there. Effects, really pushing the vignette and pushing the clarity and you would get something completely different and just as pretty and cute and on this one uh, as a composition we already touched on that on a post processing I would tune down the green just a little bit and you can do that in the HSL here so just a green and bring down the saturation just a touch just because it's so bright it's almost overwhelming so this would be one thing I would do and that's it I think that's it, yeah, a little, maybe a little vignette, which was already there anyway. I think this brightness all works very well. Just wish the whole image is shifted down a little bit, just a tiny bit, to lose a little bit of the top and add a little bit of the bottom would, I think, help a little bit. Anyway, Laurie, thank you so much for sharing the picture with us. It's a pleasure to see it. Always good to see images from you. You stay safe, take care, and send us pictures soon. Which bring us to Peter. Peter, we have uh, two images from you. And just as a uh, reminder, Peter, we kind of trying to stay away from frames as much as we can, simply because we want to focus on the actual photos rather than the frames. Um, that doesn't come from my head. It's from my colleagues who also do uh, reviews. Uh, it's just much easier than to kind of look at things without uh, focusing too much on uh, 
why is the frame white and why is it and so on so we just do this quickly and then we can look at it this is beautiful lovely lovely capture of the all here there you go so let's have a look uh and let's have a look if we have any camera detail another reason why we don't like to use the frames i don't like to use the frames is because they usually add in a way that then you don't get the camera details on the capture. So that takes away opportunity for me to tell you and give you some feedback on the camera settings and so on. But anyway, we are here, we're gonna talk about it. Uh, let's talk about this image, obviously smaller on the size. So when I kind of zoom in, it's a bit tricky to say the quality and sharpness. However, from overall, it looks quite nice. A lovely contrast between the animal and the background, quite nice light kind of hitting it from the front creating a little bit of harsher shadows here but still very very lovely uh, the grass is nice as well the depth of field created with it quite nicely done obviously the elephant all in focus all in all very very cool now this one is a beauty oh, it's a beautiful beautiful capture um, again kind of smaller quality so it's a bit difficult to kind of give a feedback on things like noise or or a sharpness however from the kind of first point of view it's nicely done love the framing of it love the animal love the background love the contrast between uh, overall just love it all so that brings us to a composition which i think is very nicely done here obviously you using the thirds a little bit off it but still as much powerful you could push it a little bit more if you would want to but that's just really playing with the details the contrast between the color and the light, I think it's very, very well done. The dynamic range is great. Really love the texture being as a foreground, bringing us into the animal. And really, as she's white, uh, it really stands out and makes it very, very pretty. So when we talk about composition on this one, uh, I think it's very dominant, very lovely picture. You can always wish for things. And one wish for this image would be that you would have just a little bit more space on the bottom. I think that would make the picture even uh, more powerful but still it's a lovely image obviously the elephant again being positioned on this side with everything else around it adding to the scene uh the drama behind make it a little bit more powerful it's not as saturated but it's quite natural which is quite nice as well for um for this so quite nicely done all in all very good now when it comes to post-processing now this one looks brilliant in black and white being pushed or um, I would just add a little bit of a vignette I think making a little bit everything dramatic maybe push a little bit the contrast and push a little bit of the saturation to get something like this and then play around with the white balance to see what you could kind of do a bit differently or so on or maybe with the hue and saturation down here other than that very cool now on this one to be honest Peter I have nothing to add I think it's super well done uh, very careful very Powerful, but very natural and well handled. So you should be proud about your pictures, Peter. They are great. Thank you for so much for sending them over. Stay safe. And if you have more, make sure you send them to us soon. Which brings us to Stevie here and the final photographer of the week. So it's time to look at Stevie's pictures. We have a squirrel. Now, I don't know what's happening with squirrel over the last few weeks, but it seems like the season is on because I get squirrels all the time in this category. So there's a squirrel here. And this beautiful spider. Now, this is something. I mean, the spider building the net, that is very cool. So let's look at the images. Let's do it. Talking about this one, Canon 80D. Uh, we're talking about lens 55 to 250 millimeters. And from the camera setting, ISO 160, which is cool. Uh, obviously, no additional noise added this way. F5 creating this kind of uh, almost like a bokeh uh, background, which is very cool. Little bit of softness here created nice depth of feel as well, very cool. And one two hundredth of a second, making sure the animal is nice and sharp. So that's very cool. Obviously, looking at it, there is a sharpness here, which is really nice. Lots of lovely little details, including the hair, very well handled with the kind of gradient softness at the back. I think it works very well. The light is also very nice, very uh, diffused uh, with kind of brighter areas at the background, darker areas in the front, all in all. Very cool. We are bringing us to this one. This was, let's have a look. Same camera, different lens. So this one is 18 to 55. And from the camera setting, you have ISO 200, 50 millimeters, f5.6, 1 60th of a second. So ISO 200, just kind of working with the noise, I assume, uh, and the lighting condition. Uh, f5.6, 
suddenly kind of make this area the most focused and they're kind of disappearing in different this also is in focus but then different parts disappearing in different amount of softness which i think it's a little bit of a shame i would probably have gone with the f-stop a little bit higher to get the details all the way through and one sixtieth of a second which really depends on how much the spider was moving uh it doesn't seem like this is a softness created by the movement it's more uh the depth of field which is working here now looking at it like this i see these kind of different colors which really look to me like a uh, chromatic aberration which is very unusual for this however let's try let's see if we can remove it inside of the optical adjustments so we click on purple and we find the purple which is kind of like here and then let's find the green which is kind of like here so let's see if that helped i think it helped a little bit let's see before after i think it removed some of it which is always cool let's see if we can do a little bit more work on it a little bit of a shame but at least a little bit work done probably it would have to be more done in uh, photoshop but at least a little bit helped uh, to kind of clean make this nice white and clean now talking about composition and this is very cool obviously the animal is interacting it's doing something uh, it's it's obviously the main subject so it's centered uh, so that all works very very well so it's excellent composition now this one it's very tight crop and to be honest to some degree i wish there was a little bit more space here that's just me uh although it still work i think it's fine but obviously the animal pointing here just missing a little bit of moving space into it. that would be something what i wish there was there just you kind of take this frame and drag it out a little bit tiny bit i think that would be very helpful again the depth of field i think works really well here and that brings us to the post processing which i think is very well done here it's very natural uh, still nice uh, shadows highlights nice details very well put together uh, i think it's very nice one of the definitely nicer captures of the squirrels i see i think here there is nothing wrong with the post-processing of course things like vignette could kind of make it even stronger and so on i think this is where the sharpness you just wish it was a little bit more sharper on these parts anywhere although in overall stevie thank you so much for sharing the images with us it's a pleasure to review them for you uh stay safe and if you have more images make sure you send them to us in the future so let's see that's it for this week so uh, for all the rest of you folks if you want to join us make sure you head to our website cleverphotographer.com review you can find all the upcoming dates links and information about how to join us and maybe become our photographer of the week thank you very much for joining me stay safe my name is jacob Bors, and i can't wait to see you again next week